your baby's picture so I'm going to leave it when I'm going. And I'm going to get out this thing. <laughs> I don't want it out moving. <laughs> and nice to meet y'all. Nice Bye. to see you. Hello. Hello. I'm George. I'm George Stoney. Annie Honeycutt. Uh, Judy's just been, I've just been playing the tape that Judy oh. made last year. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to cut off that if I may. Yes, good. Well, it was really interesting what, sh what uh, you had to say. Well, when you, if, if you say, when you get old, you forget some of these things, but <laughs> it seems like I can remember my older things better uh -huh. than I do today. <laughs> well, that's, that's the same way with me. I can remember things from my childhood, and I just can't remember my I student's know, name from last term. Uh, Jamie, shall I turn this on? Hello. 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 It's so good to what see do you. Think? you. I'm glad to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. You know what? Oh, you look wonderful. Wonderful. That's oh, don't, right. get my, don't get my arm. <laughs> I fell down. Ain't oh, that so boy, oh, that's no. bad. That's bad. Yeah. You know what? I forgot something in the car. We're going to just stop. For okay. A I know what it is to try to keep things. We had a, a looking at your china cabinet back there. We had one almost exactly like that in our old house. Well, in, I'd in taken Salem. all them, had to take them all out from the move them, you know, mm -hmm. out. They oh, moved sure. all this yeah. stuff out in the uh -huh. yard, put down this carpet, yeah. and I said, I ain't putting mm -hmm. it back till we <laughs> paint it. Yeah. Well, let me shake your hand. It's been a whole year, hasn't it? It sure has. Oh. Uh, you, how, you, how are you getting around just as good as you were last oh, year? Oh, I still grumble with my knees <laughs> once in a while. We all do that, I yeah. think. As we get older, but otherwise I'm still trotting around. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm really really glad to hear that. Uh, Super. Because I feel like if we give up and sit down, we might not get up again. <laughs> <laughs> well, what interests us, of course, is uh, your memories of the particularly the the twenties and thirties, mm -hmm. and about uh, people's uh, trying to get unions in. Yeah. And your husband was such an important part of this. Well, he worked for it, you know. Yeah. He worked for the, was an organizer. Mm -hmm. But and, uh, uh, maybe you should start by telling us something about uh, where you come from and when you started working in the mills. Uh, I started working when I was 14 years old. But uh, now, I uh, we didn't get involved in the union until about in the 30s, you know, somewhere along there. Because uh, it used to, way back when it first started, when my daddy, you know, in the earlier than that, if you talked about it in the mill, you lost your job. You know. When did your father get involved in the union, you think? I don't know. I must have been about 14 or 15 mm -hmm. years old when he left Gibson Mill because of the union. And then he went to Brown Mill. Now, you were born when? 1907. So... That was about 21. Mm -hmm. Now we do know that there was a there was an effort in a number of places about 2021 to get a union. So we're particularly interested in mm -hmm. what your father did. Could you tell us what well, you know? Well, uh, the first that I can remember is just you know when I just got out of grammar school. You know, was they begin to talk about it. That's when they first begin to lay them off. When they that was over at Gibson Mill. Then it's uh, Plant Six now. And uh, so my dad and my mother got laid off, and uh, he went to work at Brown Mill. Now, that uh, Gibson Mill was owned by Cannon at the time? Cannon. Mm -hmm. So in 1921, when your father joined the union there and your mother joined the union. Oh, they were working there. They, they, now, I don't even know whether they belonged or whether they were just trying to organize it or what. I, I do know it was about the, about the union. And they had to leave then? Mm-hmm. Uh, did they have to leave the the houses as well? We moved away when I was moved in a house. We didn't have nowhere to go. We moved in a house with my uncle in a three roomed house and had uh, six children. <laughs> we know how that was. <laughs> uh, was your was your father and mother were they bitter about that? No, they don't. Didn't seem to be bitter about it. I reckon they just taken it all in stride. If it did, they didn't let us children know about it. That's the thing that amazes me is that uh, all of this happening and the children not just not knowing. Just not knowing if they felt bitter about it. Mm -hmm. We were talking to a fellow the other day whose family had to move to South Carolina.
from uh, the Charlotte area. Because, uh, about, the, about the same year. And all he could remember was how much fun they had <laughs> in the new place when about six of them were living in, in the same room. Well, None I, of the hardships, but just that. Yes, I, I, I remember when we moved to Brown Mill, when the house was built, they was just finishing what we call, what it was named New Row. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was 15 years old then, and they just painted the outside of it the day we moved in it, and, and we all got warned not to get paint off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, and uh, my family lived in that house the last of my Two other youngest brothers went to war and come back, and my mother died, and then my father died. My mother died in 42, and my father in 47. And the two boys was not married, you know, so we just left everything. We didn't bother no furniture. We didn't need it, so we just let them have the home place. And they lived there till my youngest brother got married and, and built a home of his own, mm -hmm. lived in that one company house all them years. How many year rooms? Uh, four and a hall in it, six kids. Could you tell us about, just uh, walk through the house and tell us what it looked like? Well, it was just a ordinary house, just plain four-roomed house with a hall in it, no bath in it. We had outside the toilets then, you know. Spickets on the outside, two families used one spigot. Uh, where did you cook? We had a kitchen. In a pantry. They, back then they had pantries in the house. And uh, that's just a plain house. What kind of stove? Uh, wood stove at that time. Excuse I don't, me. I don't remember my mother ever having anything but a wood stove. George, you know what? If we're going to. The street where I live in New York and see people buying uh, wood for their little fireplaces, <laughs> $4 for a little piece like that. And, and then me, and away. then me give seven right. away. I, I uh, them uh, the sawmill took the big ones for, mm -hmm. cut it up and took it for lumber. And then three of my friends that burns wood, this fella mm -hmm. next door, and a couple more, they just took all the rest. Mm -hmm. He that fella down there said he'd have enough wood for last him two or three years. Now, next door. Yeah, I was about to ask you about uh, cooking. Uh, where'd you get your wood? Uh. I don't know. They, I guess they got somebody to bring it to the house. I don't remember about how they got the wood. I know we had an old old shed out the back that the stacked wood. We always called it the woodshed. But I don't remember. I guess they just uh, got somebody to cut it down and bring it because my daddy didn't go cut it. Did the company furnish stuff like that? Mm-mm. -uh. You had to buy it. Now, could you tell us something about life in in that village where you lived? Well, I I still, uh, it still feels like home over there now when I go. I went here a while back and visited the old house that I <laughs> stayed in. Uh, I collect dolls, and this lady collects dolls, and I went to see her dolls and haven't wind up in the house that I lived in from the time I was 15 years old. Ain't nobody ever lived in it but her and, and our family. And it's changed a lot. She'd paneled it inside, and it was all different. And, uh... Well, we the back then they used to have uh, ice cream suppers up there in the mill yard, you know, on Saturday nights. We didn't go nowhere only to church or uh, I was grown for I ever seen a movie. So uh, it's just times has changed. I know a lot of times these children the way they're doing now, but look what they've got to do with. They get the cars when they're sixteen and. What about church then? Then. The what? The church. We had a lot of uh, different things in the churches, you know, like our sunbeams and BYPUs and things like that. The children went to church then. Well, they go today. We've got a lot of good kids yet today that still, uh, but I guess it just, things has changed and we just have to learn to live with them. Now, what did the superintendent uh, in the mill uh, could take any part or concern himself with what happened in the village? No, but he was, uh, whenever after, uh, when Les got to or, uh, organizing the union, we lived down there, and uh, Mr. Harmon was our superintendent. I've got his picture. And he was always good to to look after the, you know, if anything got wrong with the house or anything unusual or 
uh, you could go talk with him. And I've, I always thought a lot of Mr. Harmon. That was our in... superintendent back in, uh, yeah, in the 30s. Which uh, village was that? Plant Six, mm -hmm. Gibson Mill. So uh, now in some places the superintendents were pretty much concerned with the kind of morals in the in the village. Was that true in any, either of the villages you lived well, in? Well, we never heard tell of no uh, stealing and carrying on like they do today. I think the children was more under control then. Now they might have done it, but they were sneaking. It was sneaking. We didn't never hear nothing about it. What about drinking? Well, I don't remember of any drinking. Uh, my husband didn't drink. Now, it might have been if he drank, you know, I might have seen more of it. My daddy never did drink, mm -hmm. so. He said he used to, I've heard him say he used to drink, but when his first boy was born, he said he, they'd never see him drink. So, uh, Les didn't drink, and we just didn't, I guess that's why we just weren't around it. Sometimes so, it's just the company you run with. You know, if you run with somebody and ranks, you're going to be with them. What about the school there? I went to Long Grammar School. I just got through the seventh grade. Then I done all my studying after I got grown. Did you go back to school when you no, got grown? I, uh, no. But I kept uh, reading and learning. And uh, when I got to... Uh, Old enough to work, went to Belk's department store and worked till I retired in fifty six. Hmm. Now back to the to the village. We're kind of interested in and kind of the life there. Could do you remember anything special about it? No, not anything. That's different special. from the way it is now. Mm -hmm. They've kept them old houses pretty much as they was, except since uh, Murdoch's bought them. You know they've run down a lot. Now they used to keep them painted. And uh, Cannon Mill kept up his house is good. He kept them painted inside and outside. Anything got wrong, all you had to do was let them know. They had maintenance man and electrician. Now, my youngest son was electrician there for years. Well, he he's, uh, still works for Cannon Mill, but it's not Cannon anymore. It's, uh, he called Plant 15 over there. Did you ever know Mr. Cannon or any of the managers? Well, uh, I think we all knew him when we'd see him, but uh, Mr. Cannon, I think it was always pretty fair with his, pretty fair with, they just didn't want the union, I don't know why, but they didn't want the union, but uh, he was a pretty fair fellow to work for, I think. He, well, I'll just tell you the truth, he's given a lot of people jobs that didn't have none, and they they made a good living for the families. Now, we can say that for him. Because he, he, Cannon really uh, looked after his people in his houses. He's been dead a long time, but you know the other Cannons still come in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. But uh, Cannons helped a lot of people. But he just didn't want the union. He, they just didn't want the union. They don't want it today. They still fighting it in these in uh, what we call the Cannon Mills. Well, tell me about your husband and the and the union in thirty four then. Well, uh, he joined the union, and uh, after we got laid uh, sorry, off, sorry, could you start off and just say my husband joined the union? Yes, my husband. He joined the union, and after he, we got laid off, you know, from the strike. Well, that's when the home guards come in. Well, he uh, started uh, organizing. That's when he got laid off because he was talking union and helping to get people to join the union and. So they uh, just didn't give us our job back. Were you working in the mill at the time? Yes, I I worked. I, I didn't. I quit working uh, in about thirty seven, I imagine. So you were in the union at the time, and the the factory at the time of the thirty four strike. I got laid off. He got laid off, and after we got laid off, uh, well they. The union helped us put in a suit against him for our wages, and we got a certain amount of our wages. Didn't get them all, but we got part of them. I got them papers yet where we was some of the court. Maybe you should show us those papers. They were laying here in my old basket where she, when she was here before. 
Judy was here before. Yeah, when yeah. Judy was here before. <laughs> you saved them, huh? <laughs> yeah, you said, now save these pictures. You know, you sat down here in the floor one night and picked out these pictures out of that picture box. And so, so it's just let's put them in a bag and we that they here yet. There's the summons. And I looked at this the other day. You asked me if you, you know, every one of them's dead that's on here except one, one of my first cousins. And he's in his 90s and he's got Alzheimer's disease in a nursing home. But as far as I know, they all passed away. So this is a summons. Uh, where is the, oh, here's the date. The 28th day of 1937. Now, this was, the strike ended uh, uh, almost four years. Three or four years. Uh, uh, four years, uh, three and a half years after, mm, somewhere before that. There. Now, and so you just kept on and kept they on. They kept on and on, and, and when we went to court, I forget what percentage of our wages they paid us. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't make as much then as we do now, yeah. but they did pay us a percentage mm -hmm. of it. Not mm -hmm. all of it, but every one that's on mm -hmm. there got a percentage of their way. This is how many that was laid off, mm -hmm. well, the names of them. Okay, the thing that interests us so much is that we keep hearing when we go to back to people talking about that time, the union went off and left us, the union didn't do anything, and this is proof that the union kept, kept trying well, to help Well, now, people. I'll tell you, during this strike, when the, the home guards was there, now, the union from New York sent us clothes, just boxes of clothes, because they, cause they come to, it was uh, shipped to my husband, mm -hmm. and we distributed them among, you know, in the winter, you know, to children and families that needed them. Now, and that come, them clothes come from New York. Even my children wore some of them. What about the uh, food at that time? Well, uh, my husband went to work for the WPA, and I don't know, it seemed to me like it didn't make about 3 or $4 a week. I don't know whether he made that much or not, but we got a certain amount of uh, some kind of food from, I don't know whether, I don't remember now whether it's the social service or or what it come, where mm -hmm. it come from, but he got a certain amount of food, you know, that each one of them that was on this got, we got some food. But I don't uh, remember what it how it come. Now, I know the women went to work in making mattresses, and my husband, he worked out just anything they had to do. I know one time uh, up at Lake uh, Fisher, you know, where we get our water, it, the, the pumps froze up, and it was cold weather, and he had to get out there and, with boots on and help, you know, get them things on froze. And it, so it was pretty hard. It was not just like going out here on an easy job. It was hard work for the men. To not make no more than they did, but it kept us alive and kept us going. Well, if you, if they will, their way. Now, uh, did you ever see any of those mattresses? Oh yes, uh, my grandmother. They brought her one. We was keeping my grandmother. I took her when she was seventy-five years old. She lived to be eighty-six, and she was living with me at the time. And uh, she had a little single bed, and they come and talk with us one day and said, I want to know if we couldn't use one of the mattress because they had to do something with them. They made them, and they brought my grandmother a mattress. I remember that, and it was a good one. They were well, felt mattresses. Well, you know, that program kept on up through about 1940, and I was working for a part of the U.S. government called the Farm Security Administration, and I can remember <laughs> talking with people who'd gotten those mattresses. Well, you know, that mattress might be at my youngest son's now. I don't know because when it, it was a good mattress and uh, my youngest son, my oldest one lives here, he's 66, my youngest one's 62, that girl that's in here, her husband. And uh, I had twin beds, you know, the two boys, that's mm -hmm. all I had. And I had twin beds in there because you used to pillar fight and fight, you know, and because <laughs> Bill's five or six years older than Ted. So I got them bed a piece. So when Ted uh, got married and had a little boy, I said, "Well, you take your bed home with you, cause I, I ain't got room for it." So Bill, put, Bill still sleeps on his and in the back room in there. Well, so I think that mattress might be on that bed yet. Well, I think present-day audiences wouldn't understand why those mattresses were so special, because in the first place they used up surplus cotton, but also they replaced a lot of uh, corn shuck ticks. And uh, 
Well, you know, they used to make the mattresses out of ticking mm -hmm. or cotton material, mm -hmm. but now they're making them out of this uh, nylon mm -hmm. or a rayon. You can't keep a sheet on hardly to save mm -hmm. your life. I, I wish they'd go back to the cotton ticking mm -hmm. on mattresses. And I, I said last time I bought a new one here about a year ago, I said I never want another that I can't keep a sheet mm -hmm. on. <laughs> <laughs> uh Tell the, the story about your, your little boy and the home guard. Oh, he was about, uh, he was born in... Uh, just start my, well, my, he, my son. He probably was about three, two or three years old. I can't remember just exactly how old he was, but I imagine he was about two to three years old. And uh, he was always lively. Everybody on the street picked at him, and he had a little old pop gun. And the home guards was out there. You know, every morning when time for them to go to work, that's why they was there to let the ones go in that won't take the jobs to go in and work. And one of the neighbors come and said, you better go out yonder and get Ted said. He's out there with that little gun saying, you better not go in that mill, you'll get shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never will forget that. And I went out there, I, I, swore, I didn't even know he'd slipped off. We just lived two houses from the gate, you know, just the second house from the mill. But what? he was out there. He was, uh, he was probably th two or three years old. Was there any hard feelings with your neighbors? No, I've never had no uh, no trouble with none of my neighbors. Uh, there or anywhere else, seem like they always we've always got mm -hmm. along with our neighbors everywhere we go. How did people look on your husband because he was a leader in the union? Well. If they did, they didn't say anything to us, you know. They didn't uh, complain to us. I think everybody just does just like they do today. They if one will vote one way and another the other. That's mm -hmm. your privilege. It's to do what you want to do. There are three things I don't never like to hear, and that's arguing on politics, religion, and uh, things like that because you're going to hurt somebody's mm -hmm. feelings because you know you don't know who you're talking to might be pulling another way. So. Now, you were telling Judy about uh, voting and, and your father. Now, what? Uh, uh, that uh, your father, they wanted your father to vote a particular way. Oh, they asked, uh, they offered my husband, a, uh, we was, one time we had, he changed jobs. This was not at that time, later on. Uh, and so uh, we was working at uh, what you call Norcott Mill then. It's brown and Norcott's right beside of each other and um, we needed a house we couldn't get one and we had moved in one room building that had been a store and was living in it till we could get a house and um, he wanted so he put in for a company house and they told him it was election year you know and they told him then if uh, he'd vote like they wanted him to he, they'd get him a house and he said well I'll just live in the store building because he was pretty stubborn about things like that uh, who told him that? His boss man, you know, the one he asked for the house. But that's been a long time ago. Do but, you think that was uh, the boss man or the owner of the factory what? No, it was not the owner of the factory. It was your boss man, the one that you had to go to for, you know, the things that you wanted. You didn't go to the head man. There was always somebody, you know, lower than the Mr. Cannon mm -hmm. that just... You just go to your boss man. But now after that, they say if you ever sue Cannon Mill, that you'll never work for him no more, but we both work for him in our older age, older years, you know. Because uh, uh, he went back and joined the Navy in 42 or 43, you know, after the war. And uh, I hadn't worked in a long time, and I went to work at Cannon Mill in the sewing room and worked about two, uh, one whole summer till I got my job back at Belk's. You know, I went back to work at the store so he could go in service. Did you like working at Belk's better than the factory? Well, I, one reason my job shut down that I was working at was just a season job. I was working in the sewing room and they made um, shade cloth for tobacco beds. And so it was just a season thing when certain times a year it shut down you know and when it shut down I went I had worked at Penny's and McClellan's so I decided to go back and I got me a job at Belts 
And then when they started up, I just didn't go back because I had a regular job there, you know. Now, some people have told us that uh, when they went into town from the, from the Cotton Mill Village on Mill Hill, that uh, people in places like Belts kind of looked down on them as lint heads. I, I, I didn't ever, uh, was never subject to nothing like that. I mean, as far as, I, I don't think that anybody ever just really mistreated us. Now, I don't know. Sometimes it's a lot of other people has bad attitudes too, you know. I've never had no trouble of getting along with nobody. My neighbors nor nobody else. I've been here for over 50 years in this house. And all my neighbors has died out now except just two, three of us older neighbors. And we're getting your younger people in here and getting children here again after ours was all gone. <laughs> but it the times changes. I know how that feeling because uh, a few years ago I was, there were, oh, nine people in my building with 37 apartments, nine mm -hmm. people uh, older than I was. Now I'm next to the oldest. They're all passing on. Passing on. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? You, you, I'm, I'm, so, I'm still amazed yeah. that you held on to that paper after all these yeah. years. <laughs> Isn't that so? You don't know what a pack rat I've been. You just... You just name it. It be if it ain't out in that old shop out yonder. It's in this attic or in this house. And I told I got these two boys. I think I I feel sorry for them if anything happens to me. And I told Bill the other day. I said, Law, I hope we don't get sick and have to come in here, Amalette, stuck us out of here with all this stuff in this house. And he had he just come home from the hospital yesterday. But well, he didn't have to go in ambulance. I didn't blame him. And, <laughs> and what made you keep that paper all these days? I don't know. I've just, uh, I've got things stuck back that, well, I've been cleaning them out. I don't know why I didn't throw that one away. I just thought, well, these boys will have all this mess to clean out. Receipts for things I'd paid for 30 and 40 years ago, I just didn't throw them away. And I sat down, I decided to keep it, get rid of all the bills except about three years back. And uh, the guarantees on anything I had bought, I said, mm. I'll get save them all that. But I don't know why, I just had never throw that away. Well, as you, you, you may know that the, the museums are beginning to get interested in telling the story of textiles. Mm -hmm. We were uh, talking with a woman a couple of days ago and found that she had been keeping a diary about her work ever since 1933, and she doesn't have any family, she was about ready to throw it out. Well, I, I said, you can't do that. The museum is going to be interested. And the museum certainly was interested. This is over at Well, Gastonia. you know, we have a museum down here about nine miles away mm -hmm. from here to Mount Pleasant. That's where my daughter-in-law lives, Mount Pleasant. And they've got a nice museum down there. And I've uh, a lot of little things that I've got that uh, I'll take down there. Cause now, like when I went to work at Belk's way back years ago, we didn't have no uh, cash registers then. We got them later on while I, before I quit working for them. But we'd put our money in a, a little brace thing, you know, write out a receipt, put it in there and stick it on a line. It'd run up to the office mm -hmm. back. And they gave me one of them. I got one of them. I'd like to see that because it's I was to check. Right, laying right yonder in the drawer. Cause <laughs> I, it, I belong to the Senior Citizens Club, mm -hmm. and we carry something old once a year. We have a show, you know, if somebody carries something. And I carried that uh, thing that I used to put my money in yeah. and send it up. And we had to stand there and wait for a change to come back. Come back. I was a check boy at, for a while in a department store like that and watched those things sailing back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's the way we got our, done our bills in. I uh, didn't handle no money except just hand it to him when he come back to us, right out of bill. Where did you think your father got his ideas about unions? I don't have no idea. Because back then, as young as I was, I just didn't, you know, pay any attention to it, I guess. Did he read union newspapers? Well, he, he had a lot of newspapers because when he died, he used to take the old Blade and Ledger and all these newspapers, and the old bookcase was stacked with all the 
World War I mm -hmm. newspapers and things. And my brother that was a pastor uh, he, at uh, Lincolnton, after my mother died, well, he gave him all them mm -hmm. papers. So I don't know what ever happened to him. And did you, did you read about uh, unions before you joined? No, we went to meetings. We had union meetings and things like that. But just to sit down and read about it, I, we just kind of grew up with it, you know, just grew on you. Tell me about the meetings. Well, we I think we'd have a meeting, it uh, seemed to me like they used to be at, at the Redmond's Hall. I don't know where them union meetings was now. It's been so long ago. But I know it's about once to meet once a week we'd have a union meeting. What would happen? And I used to stay at home and kept the babies and looked after Grandma Les went. But tell me you've been to some of them. Tell me what would happen at the meetings. Well they just bring up uh, just like any other meeting, just the, the businesses and after the meeting come to order and the complaints and the what some of them needed and they helped each other, you know, during th times like that. And would there be singing or music? No, it mostly was just like a business meeting. What about prayer? Well, I don't remember about that. I don't remember what they did or not. It was not like going to church. <laughs> now, like our senior citizen meetings, we always have devotions, and somebody will come and give devotions or something like that. It was not like that. It's more, more or less just like a business meeting. Now, that, that was just a regular union mm -hmm. meeting. Just a regular union meeting. Now, I don't know, Les went off to some of the other meetings after he got in it, but and and he even worked out of town, would go and be gone a week at a time after he went to work with Red List, you know. Tell me about Fred List. Well, he... Uh, Just describe him. He, uh, well, I can't hardly describe him, except the reason they called him Red, his hair was kind of reddish, you know. He was not just right red, red-headed, but... Uh, he he might, might have been when he was small. And uh, he was a nice-looking guy. But uh, his hair was kind of reddish, and he was uh, just uh, ordinarily maybe about that man's size mm -hmm. built. But he did gain a little weight after he got a little older, you know. But we've seen pictures of him, and he's always kind of dressed up like a businessman. Well, he went that way all the time. He dressed nice. And your husband, when he was organizing? Yes, he dre he went nicely dressed, as well as he could afford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see, where's that paper that I this I got a set of cuff, sterling silver cufflinks in here somewhere. If somebody, he award, they awarded him this, uh, or gave it to him or something. I know they, I've still got them here. And me selling junk all the time, and I said everything's gold and silver. It was bringing good prices. I, uh, I never did sell them old sterling silver uh, cufflinks. That's fascinating. T -W -A. You know when when the gold got high and uh, silver, we to took I took all my old broke jewelry, you know, and stuff like that, and sold it while the gold was high. What does it say, Annie? T W U A uh, C I O. AF, it's, I can't, now I, my sin is bad. It looks like AFL, CIO. Textile Workers of Union of America. Textile Workers Union mm -hmm. of America. Now I don't know what that TWA means, do you? Textile Workers Union of America. America. Well, that, yeah, I just read it, didn't I? I just wondered when uh, when this was given to him. Uh, back, oh, long. Well, it must have been back in the the 30s, somewhere, somewhere along mm -hmm. there. It's in the 30s, because... Uh, so he he really dressed up when he went out to... Mm -hmm. to they, wore, they used to wear shirts that they wore cufflinks. I think I've got a picture. I don't know what I've got. These are pictures she picked out. Uh -huh. this, we sit here. She was looking for old pictures. Mm -hmm. Now this is Ted when he was the little boy that took the... <laughs> this is the fellow who had the pop had gun? The gun. He's, he had the pop gun. 
He looks like he has a little meanness in him. There's his daddy. Uh-huh. Uh, he's got a cap on. Mm-hmm. Now, this is later on years. That was him when he was a boy. That's his mm -hmm. daddy when he was a boy. Oh, these are great pictures. And I, I thought I had a picture of my daddy somewhere and my mother together, but I ain't found it. Now, that was my daddy now. She, she had a letter that my daddy wrote because she's telling me, uh, reading it here one night, and I said, well, that's my daddy. Now, here's, now, Ted right there has got on one of them coats from New York that they sent down there in them boxes of clothes. Uh -huh. Now, that's how little he was, you know, at that time. Okay, we're going to get close. Now, this is Ted with the New York coat on. The New York coat on. <laughs> it was winter time, cold weather, you know, when after the strike, and uh, people was really out of work, a lot of them. And they sent this all these clothes to the Union Hall. Well, they, they were shipped to Les, and he distributed them. And what... Uh, they uh, found out from the union, you know, at the meetings, who needed clothes mm -hmm. and who didn't. And uh, so uh, my children got coats out of them for that winter. How would you feel about uh, your father and then your husband giving so much of their lives to the union? Well, I don't know. I think it just come natural. Just like it was a need that we needed. It just come natural. I never did it. Uh, never did bother me too much. Was it? Did it have now the only thing that bothered me was when he went had to be took the job and uh, went off and organized it, like would be gone a week, and I had two children in school and a grandmother to look after. Now that kind of bothered me. I'd rather then he'd stayed at home and done his work around here, but I didn't. Uh, I know we had to have a living. Mm -hmm. We had to make a living. Now, you told us about Red Lisk. Could you tell us about any of the other organizers? Mm, I don't remember none of them but Red. What about uh, Paul Christopher from uh, Shelby? I don't remember him. He was a young fellow, just 24, 25 in, in 1934. I don't, I don't remember him at all. He, but, uh, Do you remember a fellow named, uh, uh, the, the fellow who led the strike named uh, Francis Gorman? From he was from New York and then from Washington. No, I I, I don't remember them. Mm -hmm. now, now if Les was living, he could he could probably tell you about all that. But I did uh, Les go to New York for a convention? Mm -mm. He never did have that kind of money back then, because times was hard. They sent a delegation from from uh, your area to the convention, and we haven't so far been able to find anybody who actually, we've found one person who went. Well, I, I know Les didn't, and I don't know whether Red List went or not, but I know Les I'm not sure, go. do we know her? No, no, no. This is a great picture of your father. <laughs> Did you take pictures at that time? Uh, we had a little old cameras and things, and I don't know where all these pictures come from. Mm -hmm. They just, I've just, I got a box just accumulated. Yeah, yeah. I imagine every picture that I've had made uh, that's come to us for the last 67 years is in a box. <laughs> well, these are so unusual. That was my daddy when he was young. Uh, now, she's got a letter from him, from uh -huh. Brown Mill. But now he was heavy when he, when he died. These are wonderful pictures. Uh, where was he living when th this picture was taken here? Uh, in Concord here. Mm -hmm. I believe on Railroad Avenue. Mm -hmm. Now that's did... where my grandpa Henson died at, and I think that's where they were living. On you know we called it Railroad Avenue, mm -hmm. right at Plant Six over there. Where did uh, your folks come from to come into uh, Kannapolis? I don't know. Uh, they've been here in Concord ever since. Now, we moved from Charlotte. The, Jar the Jarvises did. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, my people come from the Jarvis side. That's before they married, you know, the Henson. And uh, they they lived in Charlotte, Mecklenburg County. Did they? Just keep moving, Bill. 
Just keep, no, keep this ring right, yeah. right about there. Yeah, you might want to find a picture of Les. Okay, yeah, he's got one. I think of, hey, that's your father. A little one over there. That's he's got father. a couple. This is a son. You okay. had the pop gun. This is her father later on. And this is Les. Oh, that's still right there. That's, uh, yeah, that with, was With the husband. cap on. Mm -hmm. And then I got another one there with the, with a hat on. That was later on in years. Aha, uh -huh, then I made a, made a, make a mistake. Can I move now? Sure. Uh, maybe this is less later on. I made a mistake then. Uh, with the car? Mm hmm This? Yeah, okay. that's him too. Sorry, Jamie. Yeah. This is this Styles is less. change. Yes, yeah, this is later on. <laughs> the cap to a hat. Yeah. That's me when I was a baby. Car. As old as I am. <laughs> Let me see that again, ma'am. Annie, can you hold that up again? Right from where you are. Oh, this? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get it. That was you when you were a baby? And I'll be 85 year old 21st next month. Wow. Well, you've done well. No bare skin rug? Oh, the, the Lord's been... No bare skin rug. <laughs> oh, the Lord's but been good to you. If I fall many more times, I'll... <laughs> uh, okay. I've got arthritis in one of my knees, and sometimes it gets sore, and I start in yonder... In, in the bathroom and hit that heating hall and start falling and keep from hitting my head on the commode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hit a, a place that my boy put me a, a a thing on the bathtub to pull mm -hmm. up and down, and I, that's what struck my mm -hmm. heart. Well, one thing we haven't talked about is what it was like to work in the mills. I enjoyed working in the mills. Uh, myself, I, I reckon that's just all I know because I went to work in the uh, when I went to work in the mill, I was 14 year old and I was little for my age. And uh, my uh, mother, you know, you had to have a work card. And to prove that I was 14 years old, you know, back then you could go to work when you was 14. I was so little, uh, they didn't believe it. And they, uh, he, she had to get somebody that had known me from the time I was born to prove that I was that age because I was little for my age. And you wouldn't look at it now. I wouldn't think it now. <laughs> but uh, when I went to work, um, the lady that learned me how to spin, they'd give us our sides together where she learned me how to put up the ends. You know, I could do that. But I couldn't reach the roping. And she'd done all the creeling up above and let me go along and put up the ends. And they added more sides to her because, and me just to help her. We run them together. That's the way I learned. Till I got long enough to, uh, old, you know, got to where I could uh, reach my roping by taking a stick and sticking it in the spools and mm. letting it fall down and getting it and creeling it. Till I, and whenever the, once a year they'd inspect come through on account of uh, children working, you know, back in the mills at that time. And the day before the inspector come, they'd always know when this coming. Well, Annie, you can be out tomorrow. <laughs> Because they was afraid they'd have problems of thinking I was underage, you know. But it's because I was just that small. I was that old, but... What shift did you work on? First. Did you ever work at night? Not when I was young. I don't... I did after I was married. What... Uh, just describe what it was... Feel like, smell like... Uh, uh, you, you know, as a child you went in, it must have... Well, I guess you just grew up and I know there's a lot of lint, a lot of cotton, you know, lint flying around and all, but I think if you grew up in it, you, it just didn't bother you. You just didn't pay that much attention to it. Did you ever have trouble with your breathing? No, but I have since I got old. But uh, now, uh, I had one aunt that had this uh, took asthma so bad. Now, they retired her young, you know, on account of her asthma. From the work she done, I think she worked in the card room. Though, seemed like she did. 
Well, the spinning room was where, I guess, most of the lamp was. Yeah, yeah, it's in the card room, too. I, I've worked in the spinning room all the time. Now, during the, uh, in 42, when my husband went back in service, and I hadn't worked on this since in the 30s, I'd stayed home, took care of the kids, and uh, I went in and learned to run drawings. You know, back then, women went on men's jobs to, uh, for the husbands to be in service, because they were all gone. And I learned to run drawings and work till I went back to work at Bell's. Till I went to work at Bell's. But it was hard on me. Boy, I lost weight when I went <laughs> and learned to do that job. It was a man's job. And I know I was so short I couldn't reach down in them big old cans and, and get my cotton. I got a wooden finger here somewhere. They took a quill. The thread was wound on. Mm -hmm. It's about this long and had a hole in it and slanted it off and made me a finger to put mm. on my finger to reach the cotton down in there. Mm. I've got that old finger here somewhere. <laughs> was Still. it uh, hot in there? I don't think it was. They had windows open then, mm. back then. But then they claimed that having that air in there made the work run bad, you know, and they gradually closed the windows up and and uh, they didn't have the windows up. We used to sit in the windows, get our ends up, you know, and go sit in the winter that was raised and rest. Now, back then, we had more freedom than they do now. The mills weren't wired up. And over there at uh, Brown Mill, we'd get our ends up and run across the street to the cafe and get us a coma ice cream and go back. They didn't, uh, or we'd go out in the yard. As long as we kept our work going. But now, you know, they put fences around there and you're not allowed in and out. So there's a lot of difference in it now than there was back then. Do you remember when they started speeding up the machinery and it had something called that the union called the stretch out? Uh, I, I don't think I was working at that time. I've not worked in the mill, but just uh, maybe eight or nine months during, in the 40s, since the 30s. See, I, I didn't work. I couldn't. I wouldn't even know how to run this machinery they got now. Well, back then you were... Uh, you're working 10 hours a day or 11 hours a day. 10. And then what happened when Roosevelt came in? Well, we worked 10 hours a day till, uh, I guess, till my uh, youngest son. You know, when my children come along, they went on eight hours. Now they own 12, mm. 12 hours a day. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know whether he's grumbling about it now or not. He did at first, but... Uh, He's uh, he's going to retire in December, so he won't have long, much longer to go. They just put him on it. Now, what he uh, uh, decided to retire, he had a heart attack about four or five months ago. And uh, the doctors just let him go back to work. He had to have three bypasses. But uh, to be put in for disability or anything, it would take him from now to December to ever get it through if he could get it. And he'll be old enough to retire in December. So he said... He just went and bought him 25 mm -hmm. acres down on the river and put him a mobile home down there. Said he's going to fish. Said he, he might have another heart attack and he might not never have one, but said he was going to take it easy. Said he'd worked long enough and he's going to retire. So he'll be 62 in December. Mm -hmm. That's Ted, the one that had the gun. <laughs> but now, he, he didn't like this 12-hour work at the mm -hmm. beginning. And then one one thing that he didn't do, he was electrician foreman for years. Well, he kind of mill those give him a good education, you know, in schooling because uh, they sent him off to school for he can draw anything he wants to, and he sent him off to school for to draw patterns for their bedspreads and sheets and things. But you got to wait in line till somebody died. But Mr. Harmon found out he could draw like that. This is a superintendent here. And he asked him to take it, so he took the training for that. But then when he went in the Navy, he studied electrician. He went to school a year for that then. And one of them died in the electric shop, and Mr. Harmon wanted him to switch. You know, they needed him there. So he went in there, and he weren't there too long to put him in foreman of the job. And so he worked there for a long time. And then when they closed down Plant 6, um, they offered him a boss man job of a... The machine shop ordering the parts for all the cannon mills, you know. So he went to work there, and here about uh, the time they put them on 12 hours, 
they begin to cut down on these boss men. You know, like uh, cutting out some. I think they cut out five. Well, that cut him out, put him back to labor. He's he's making regular hour wages now. Well, he would have quit right then, but he said he's too near old enough to retire. So he stayed on with it. And uh, But he's bad. I'm not going to, when they, this other boss man come down, he was the white collar boss man. He said he can't do what I done because he, Ted brought all them blueprints for that electric shop. Anything went wrong, they didn't, nobody know nothing about it but him because he had drawn the blueprints for it. And, but he does call him at the middle of the night and something's happened over there. Ted, will you go over there and straighten it out? But now they agreed here a while back if he would do this, they'd pay him his boss man wages. Mm. So he said he's going to stick. He said, Mom, I got too much in it to mm. lose. And as near as I am old enough to retire. Now, back <coughs> back in the, in the early 30s, when your husband and your father were in the union, uh, did were they ever afraid and had guns around? Uh, I never did see no guns. We just never did have no guns around our children. My daddy, I never did know him to have. Well, my daddy had a pistol, but as far as violence, I don't, they didn't talk, talk violence. Now, they always some hotheads that, you know, that's got to be in something like that. They, they, that way today, they always just a few people that's going to. Can you excuse me a minute? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Tell me about okay. that, that okay. picture there. That you, up, yeah. Oh, the weavers. Yes, she sang it as well. Yeah, that's great. I don't know what, how many. Out. I don't know how many old records is in here that's closed so, up. How'd you happen to get this? That was my husband. I I got the. Uh, my fair lady, I remember that. Well, there there are a lot of them. They their records in here that come from Texas. Uh -huh. That uh, it's in here closed up, and I told my mm -hmm. grandson I'm going to give him this mm -hmm. record player and all these records, or let him you have gotta, what he wants mm -hmm. of. You got to be showing me the thing in the drawer. Oh. This. You see, we'd put our money and our bills in this. And then we'd close it up, and there was an electric, I reckon there's electric wire that we'd put on it. Uh -huh. We'd shoot it up to the office. They'd put a change back in it, and then we'd get the change out and give it to our customer. I worked in a, uh, one Christmas, uh, two Christmases, I worked in a department store as a check boy, and I saw that happening all over. Well, well that's a, so whenever I put up there and they'd done away with all that, they give me, when they got us cash registers, they give me one of them. Uh -huh. So I've had it ever since. And all these uh, dolls here? Oh, that's just part of them. <laughs> I got dolls packed up and packed up. And these are outdated dolls, discontinued, mm -hmm. you know, back uh, where they don't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. And my china dolls, they're all packed in boxes. See, my son, when he come to live with me, I had that room, use it just for dolls. And I had about a 30-year collection, <laughs> and I've sold a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So whenever he come here to stay, mm -hmm. I had to move my dolls mm -hmm. out. That's why they packed mm -hmm. up here. No, I had a, a doll sale, and once in a while I'd throw them out mm -hmm. here and run me in the paper. What did I want to keep, you know? And there are a lot of doll collectors mm -hmm. now. Uh, why don't you sit over there just a moment? And <coughs> Well, they've got this stable pushed in here <laughs> where I can't get in Okay, it. let's see if we can They'll have to move it out again tomorrow. <laughs> okay. That's Y'all were getting a picture of my house when it's in its <laughs> worst taste. Because I had china everywhere. That was my mother's old safe. Well, Judy wanted me to, to see if I could go, we could go over uh, some of the things we've been talking about. Uh, how is that, Jamie, for uh, uh, this? Okay, want to look at me here and just say hello, Ronnie. Okay? You want me to say yes, hello, uh -huh. Ronnie? Hello, Ronnie. <laughs> and one more, let's see, see if uh, we can uh, get you to help us remember how people organized back then. We know that there was a great big strike. We know that 
literally hundreds of thousands of people came out, but there was a lot of effort that made that happen, and you were one of the few people who was around then. Uh, so could you tell us? Well, uh, mostly that they would talk to each other when we'd be in groups or crowds or, uh, well, it, it, news spreads, you know, and we'd, uh, then they'd have the, start having the union meetings, you know, if anybody that wanted to go could go, but a lot of it was done just by talking to people, you know, anybody uh, to see who was interested in joining the union and who weren't, you could soon find out just by talking to people. Just but, like they do in politics, kind of, you know, just uh, spread the word around. And some people support, some people ain't. But wasn't there a, f a fear of uh, company spies? I don't know. I never did uh, did have no fear of nothing uh, myself. You know, when you're younger, you know. Uh, now, right now, the way the world is, we. Uh, think about somebody breaking in, stealing stuff. There's a fly in the cell. She'll get it. <laughs> but I hope she didn't get it on that tape. <laughs> 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 what I said. <laughs> yeah. uh, could you tell us about uh, then? Do you remember that were the women's groups particularly, or what did the women do? Well. We just don't like the men. We'd get, uh, now, whenever we'd get our work done up a long time ago, we'd get caught up. We'd go to the restroom. I went in there many times to, to, just to sit and talk. The women would dip the snuff, and we'd sit down and sit down on the floor, squat down on the floor, when, you know, just around. It was a big restroom, you know, and that's where we'd gather up to take a break when we'd get our end, you know, our ends up on our spinning frames and I, I, I know when I tried to learn to dip snuff <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> I thought well that looks so good you know I thought well I'd try it Lord I never have been so sick I never took but one dip I never did dip no snuff no more but I'd go out there and watch the set and talk with the rest of them and there's where we'd spread to talk to each other you'd soon uh, learn what was going on whenever we'd go to take our breaks and get together and uh, it don't take uh, news long to spread and you soon learn who you can talk to about it and who not to because if they're against it you just well hush and first thing you know you got a new member and you know somebody else is for it and and a lot of it was talked like that but now that it was had to be kept quiet because the boss man's are in the thing you know got a hold of it a lot of times you lost your job did you see